the Coin Show Podcast. A podcast about coins and coin collecting from the perspective of both dealers and collectors. Hosted by two guys with a passion for collecting and a combined experience of over 50 years in the coin industry. Here's Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman on the Coin Show Podcast. And here we are, episode 234. 234, yeah. Wow. Podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Matt. And, uh, you know, the, your your music never ceases to make me smile. I, it's always something different, and it's always something cool. Got to get your head bobbing, buddy, before we Thank do you. the show. Just like I have to get you laughing every time. So right. uh, people are starting to pile in. Uh, I see uh, Jack Young is here. Can't have a show without Jack. So um, on this episode of the Coin Show Podcast, we will be talking about uh, the Central State Show mm-hmm. and what we've got coming up. We are going to be doing some stuff there. And you guys, if you're attending, you get a chance to join in. We uh, will also do the coolest thing to walk into our shop this week. Mm-hmm. Matt seems to think he has a chance. I do. But I first, it. as always news the news is brought to you by toothpicks hundreds and hundreds of years of service without a major design change another tribute to the genius that are toothpicks (laughs) i like that one that was good that was good. You know, I, I do my best. So, um, Matt, in the news, Kentucky has now joined the states, and it is now a majority of states that have a tax exemption for currency and bullion. Good job, Kentucky. Good yes. job. Good on you. Most coin shows. So that's it's always a good thing. Um, there, how many states are left that don't allow? Well, so it says here that uh, the Bluegrass State has become the 44th state. So it sounds like six, if my math is correct. So if your math is correct and we still have 50 states, yes, that's correct. So six uh, places have, have, you know, decided that they don't want coin shows enough to where it doesn't matter. (laughs) Well, you know, whatever. It's just my take. But I'm glad to see it. And Kentucky, you know, could use the, the commerce it's a great state. I love Kentucky. Even a Commonwealth. True that. True that. Uh, the Certified Acceptance Corporation has announced the CAC Grading Club. They had a couple of announcements this week, I saw. Yes, they did. Um, this one so, I thought was really important from the standpoint of this is now going to allow the general public to submit coins to CAC for grading. Yeah, I think it's like a ninety, like a hundred dollars uh, yearly thing, and then you get uh, some credits towards grading or something. I think that's what it says here. Yeah, there it is. It says that they're going to give you. I think it was a uh, they're going to fifty dollar grading credit and a subscription to market review. Oh, okay. There you go. Ninety nine bucks. Not bad at all, really. And then they also uh, to uh, it's the submission privileges. I think that are that are the real value there. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, that's now they don't have to go through people like us that are submission centers to have their coins, you know, yeah, uh, right. have, have their coins sent in. Olson, have them come back at another 63. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they also they also announced uh, just a couple of days ago that their registry is almost ready, too, uh, or is ready, is is coming. So now, now you may look at that as a very small D democratic kind of move, right? To be the everyman's uh, grading service. Anybody can submit it. But think about it from a business standpoint, it's genius. Because the fact of the matter is, is that now anybody can submit it, which means they're going to get all the stuff that shouldn't be submitted. Well, yeah, I, I'm fairly sure that those grading companies, when they get those kind of orders, they kind of look at each other and they're like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> this one. <laughs> yep. It's going to end up in a junk box. Okay, here we go. Yep. So, yeah, you know, I mean, it's interesting, though. Um, In U.S. Mint news, the new quarter silver 
proof set is out. So this is the uh, silver set of the five designs for the women on quarters. I, I like the designs this year. I can't really speak to who uh, some of these women are. Man, that Celia Cruz set, she is looking mighty feisty. Celia Cruz is an icon. Yeah, she mighty feisty. An absolute icon. And, I mean, it, you know, so, I don't know. It's, I like I like how they're spreading it around. I did not really appreciate the fact that Maria Tallchief, even though she's a Chicagoan, uh, had two coins last year. I just didn't think that was worth it. But these sets are available for uh, 80 bucks. Yeah. 80 bucks for five silver quarters. Um, and they've already sold 34,000 of them. Wow, really? No, 44, 45,000 of them. Holy cow. 45,000 of them. And they're only going to sell like maybe 200,000 of them total. Huh. I, Just, don't you remember when you could get those in your proofs, your silver proof sets? Well, you still can. You can yeah, still but if this set here is $80, then how much is your silver proof set? 150, 120, 10, 130, somewhere in there. Yeah, yikes, yikes, yeah. bikes. Yeah, and it's you know, they said that uh, that getting the pure silver blanks were going to make things cheaper for them to make them. Well, that obviously didn't happen. Well, maybe it did, maybe they just upped the profits. <laughs> Speaking yeah, of cheaper, cheaper for who, I guess, is the question, right? That's that's the real question. So, uh, speaking of up. The 2024 American Innovation Dollar for Alabama has been released. The innovation was the Saturn V rocket. Okay. That was the rocket that they needed the, that had enough power to take us to the moon. I kind of like that. That's cool. I'm a space guy. Yeah. Space nerd. Space cadet. Hey. <laughs> uh, let's see. So in 1967, NASA initiated the Apollo 4 mission by launching the inaugural Saturn V rocket. That's cool. That's a cool coin. I might have to get some of those. Just because I'm a nerd like that. I have to pick myself up off the floor. You'd best stop with that stuff. Don't talk, don't talk all crazy like that. <laughs> this next story is kind of more, more up my alley. I think so. So um, Coin Week is reporting uh, the sale of a strong Mint State 1805 capped bust right half eagle. There we go. I got pictures of it. There she is. 1805 $5 gold piece in MS64 by PCGS. And the so, coin actually kind of looks mint state. Some of these coins uh, over the years have gotten into, like, have gone from AU55s up to, like, MS62s, and you can tell. But this coin's not bad. I, I don't hate this coin. Looks like there were only four obverse dies and two reverse dies for the 1805 cap bust. Right. And what, did this, so, what did this coin sell for? Oh, it's still it's selling okay. currently. It has eight days and one hour. Eight days, one hour left. And uh, but I mean, look at that coin. Yeah, that coin. It's about as nice as a half eagle gets. Um, you know, a five dollar gold piece was not not as dominant as a ten dollar gold piece. Right. Even though the ten dollar gold piece was harder to come by. Yeah, that coin's pretty. The the luster it's got a lot of luster for one of those. It's not struck all that well, as you can see up in the hair here. You know, it's got the, the little flat kind of dark spots. I think that's strike and not wear. Uh, but the reverse looks pretty fully struck, uh, except maybe right in here. Uh, it's got pretty banging luster all the way across it. So I can't say I, I can't argue with that. Great. Yeah, and it. I mean, if you look, they could barely fit the stars on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's cool. All this is. I mean, that's not yeah, they're not very big coins. They're 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 slightly larger than the uh, uh, slightly larger than the fives that we get that we know. You know, like the the ones the the liberties and the the Indians, but not much bigger. So, um, Stax Bowers did have their spring twenty twenty four showcase auction, and they. Ended up doing over thirty-two million in this, but what I thought was really interesting was some of these notes that were offered. So, if uh, you want to look, there is. So, this first one is a legal tender. Wow. Oops. Yeah. There we go. It's an 1862 fifty-dollar legal tender, wood chipper, 
right? No, 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 no. This is just Sorry. a legal tender. Any of these eighteen sixty two series notes? They're tough, tough, tough to find this halfway decent. Are. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. Note. And this one says repaired. Let's see if we can figure out where it was repaired. I see it. Do you see it? I see it. Is it uh, on the bottom? Uh, it's on the bottom and the top, right here, and then right here, and then here, and looks like maybe right there there was some repair work done. Looks like it might have had a couple holes in it, and it was repaired at one point. Yeah, you can see it on the front Very here. Cool. Um, cool. Well, there's another one. There is, uh, let's see, a $1 legal tender note, which was assigned 67 EPQ. Wow, that's a monster. Yeah, it's the finest of its Freebird number known. This one went for 26 4 Wow. That's a cool note. Lot 21053 was an 1862 $10 legal tender. That's probably one of my favorite notes. That it has the very kind of stoic Lincoln and the, the turkey eagle. Yeah. And look at the signature on the right. Yeah, Spinner. Yeah. They always, I mean, it's like the ones that looked like that. And he's on a couple of notes. Yeah. A lot of the frac. He's on a lot of the fractionals. Okay. Yep. That's where you see his signature. Uh, let's see. So this one got 63000 Wow. There's a $50 silver certificate, an 1891 $50 silver certificate. 66 EPQ. Yeah, it's a meh. Meh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Meh. It's meh. Yeah. No, it's it's beautiful. I since we hired our paper money guy, I have a, a new appreciation for this stuff. Um, oh, it's good. So that one, that one got twenty eight eight. Wow. Yeah. I have and one of these hanging on my wall at the office. Not nearly this nice, but and oh, not God. nearly that low a serial number. Then there was the sheet. The uncut sheet of four uh, eagles. Black eagles, yep. Yeah. That got 28 8. Wow. Let's look at the back. Last but not least. Very cool. Yeah. Let's see here. There is a $1,000 gold certificate graded extremely fine 40 by PMG. So it's a small size $1,000 gold certificate. Really rare. Yeah, those are stupid rare. Any of those any of those gold seals, uh small size gold seals like that are just dumb rare notes, all of them. Every single one of them. So this one got 348. Wow. Very cool stuff. Really nice. Nice. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Canada. There I am. That's right. So Canada has new twenty dollar silver proof coins to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Royal Canadian Air Force. Man, I see this coin, what? and I think Highway to the Danger Zone is just playing in my head. See, and I think about South Park, and I'm not your guy, buddy. I'm not your <laughs> buddy, guy. No, Highway to the Danger Zone. Yeah, you, that's, you that's, what that coin, that's what that coin screams to me. And then I see a big ear on it, and I'm like, oh. Well, look, he's got to be on it. It's yeah, real. I know, but man, his 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 bust just keep getting weirder and weirder on the coins. You know what? You're gonna make me speak it into existence, but I'm telling you, you complain about him enough, okay? And he's gonna go away, and they're gonna put Will on the coins, and for whatever reason, Will is gonna have some ghastly <laughs> dis disfigurement on mm -hmm. his coin. I don't know what it is, but it's gonna be ugly. He'll fall down the stairs and I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but man, he's just he's just staring at you. It's just a big old ear just looking right at you. It's crazy. He's got crazy. two of them. I know. Cheap. Um, so I love this story. This okay. really made me think about uh about something that happened in American history. But let's cover the story first. So I there's a new hundred real coin that was released by a rebel controlled Yemeni bank. So the rebels took over the central bank in Yemen and they started making money. Okay. I mean, Very much like the Confederacy took over mints 
like New Orleans. And started striking coins. That's true. Making money. So, I mean, this is not an original idea, um, but it is a very cool story. I wonder how you get one. It'd be kind of cool to have. Yeah. Well, the question is, is uh, did they, I mean, they didn't make dies for these, did they? Yeah, they had to. They had to. That's how they made them. They're struck. If you look at them, they have luster. They're, they're definitely struck. So, yeah, I know, but uh, Eagle Insignia, Republic of Yemen. Uh, one real coins is noticeably missing from these new coins. Okay, so they took something off of the coin. They took so, out the ego insignia of the Republic of Yemen. Yeah, so maybe they altered existing dyes. I'm just trying to think of how they did, you know, the dyes and stuff. I mean, uh, a properly motivated person could, could easily make well, up dyes. Yeah, that's true. But I'm talking skill. I'm not talking about motivation. I'm talking about skill. Well, I mean, if you look at them, they do kind of look a little odd. That that weird building on the front. I mean, yeah, they 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 got it all right, but it kind of looks like a cheese grater. And the writing looks. No, I'm not. I'm not even going to go there. Yeah, no, the English isn't bad. The 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 Roman lettering or the what? I can't read Arabic, so yeah, I read Arabic numbers. That's about it. Oh, there's only 10 of them. <laughs> Jerk. So the Chapman collection of century-old $1 gold coins has been unearthed. Uh, this is... this. So I, I was trying to get my head around this because this set was assembled by Henry and... Um, oh, God. Yeah, Henry Chapman. Henry Chapman and his brother, uh, you know, who were both coin dealers. And so they had a complete set of one dollar in Liberty Head and Indian Princess had dollars struck between 1849 and 1889. They had a whole set of them, and it's come to light, I see, by looking at the yeah. So it's uh oh man, what's the other brother's name? I don't know. But, uh, but they were very famous, uh they were very famous coin dealers. Oh, Samuel Hudson Chapman, that's what it is. So yeah. Henry Chapman and his brother Samuel Hudson Chapman, they were really famous coin dealers in the late 19, 19th century and 20th century Philadelphia, early 20th century. So when we took in that gigantic collection uh, two years ago, I was talking about they were all in BMAX mail envelopes and, and Henry Chapman envelopes. So some of these coins have the Chapman envelopes as well as the slabs. Well, I think that I think the coins turned. If you read the story here, which I did, uh, I think that the coins actually turned up in the envelopes uh, yeah. from a family in Philadelphia, and then it says the current owners thought their ancestors' coins might be worth about fifty thousand dollars, but they are now insured for two million. That's so true. it looks like they had a complete set of dollars in the Chapman envelopes. Yeah, I mean, there's they, an MS sixty eight. Uh, 63 gold dollar. There's an 1881 proof 66 deep cam. Wow. Monster coins in here. 84, 67 plus cam. Some big stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it just goes to show you, though, that that stuff, it, it, you just never know when it's going to turn up, where it's going to turn up. And and that's what keeps me going back to my office every day. I, I know you're the same way. So. Actually open my mind's up. My mind, my eyes about that because it's like it, it it prompted me to make the comment, the obvious comment of everything is somewhere. Um, <laughs> because you know, yeah. it, it's not that they're all concentrated in the cities or in high end collect, they're scattered. Yeah, I mean, the, these people thought this collection was worth fifty thousand dollars and it was worth two million. I mean, looks like. They were in for a pleasant surprise when those coins were evaluated. So cool. Very cool. And one of my favorite parts of the news every week is when I get an opportunity to review one of Jack Young's uh, Fun with Fake Ads. Or one oh, of boy. Here we go. There's an 1833, not PCGS half dollar counterfeit. Well, but it says PCGS right on the slab, right yeah. there on the back. Yeah. You see it? Sure does. And it says 1833, and it says uh, United States of America. And it's not that either. Yeah, that's true. Um, um, you know, Jack breaks this down, how he found the eBay 
uh, how you found the eBay listing. And he starts to point out things from the slab that are bad, things from the coin that are bad. And, you know, this is just where he is doing yeoman's work to the hobby. And then down towards the bottom, he has the fake coin shown next to true views of actual genuine coins. Is it? Is it the it is the actual genuine coin in the same certification the number? From the, the one from the actual from the true. Right. That's so that is the the one on the right is the fake slabs certification number, but the real coin. The one on the right is the real one, coin. one on the left is the, the junk that yeah. made its way into the fake holder. Oh, it even shows a picture of the real one with a CAC sticker. Cool. Yeah. So oh. uh, and then I keep scrolling, and there's more. There's the second one. That would be the first thing to look for is look for the CAG sticker on a, on a, on a Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, he has, uh, let's see, this one has a deactivated certification. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? This one, the lettering is wrong. Uh, well, it looks like they, so PCJS is really good about this. When they see those fake slabs, they will actually go in their system and kill that certi certificate number, even though it does belong to a real coin. And I'm fairly sure that they will hold her that real coin in with a new certificate number. I believe that's or, for the do. owner. Yeah, um, I think they do. They contact the owner and then they, they, uh, they rehold her with a new cert number. Yeah. So now there's a twist. See, here's a twist. It looks like a different date, but with the same reverse die. Yep. So that just shows that they're using the same fake reverse die to strike different dates, but that date's really bad. Ugh. Well, basically, what he's saying is that, okay, so they shut down that operation. So now he's moved it here. He's well, but these are all made by the same people. That, because they, well, they yeah, use what I'm saying is that now he's, he's making the 1812s and the 1824s and the 1836s. Right. Wow. Look at that. All those... I'm just glad we have we have Jack around. Yeah, it's a cesspool out there, friends. Be very careful when buying coins, especially uh, from places like Etsy. But even eBay, eBay is pretty good about pulling that stuff down. But places like Etsy and Craigslist, or not Craigslist, but like Facebook Marketplace, there is nobody patrolling like Jack out there on those places that that the the, the websites will actually listen to and take take care of business when they have to. So just be careful. Be very careful and read Jack's articles first. Yes. Yes. And finally in the news, I'm going to have to take um, our friends at Coin Week, Charles Morgan and Hubert Walker, um, Coin Week notes to task on this because uh -oh. what is a story that has a lot of, a lot of detail and a lot of nuance and they condensed it into four paragraphs and okay. some notes. And if you don't really like reading the notes, you're not going to learn anything from this. Um, so I really think it was very interesting time in 1964 when they decided to do the date freeze on coins. So yeah. At this point, there was more than a dollar's worth of, or rapidly approaching more than a dollar's worth of silver in a dollar's worth of silver coins. And so, um, you know, the United States government knew that they had to do something about it, but they didn't know if people would accept the non-silver coinage. It was literally fiat current. You know, I mean, it's just as it, it's worthless. You couldn't melt it. You couldn't do anything with it. Right. And so they really didn't know if people were going to accept it. Now the article, you know, talks about the date freeze and, uh, talked about, you know, they authorized the date freeze in the summer of 64, which is correct. And it allowed them to strike coins with the date of 1964 after 1964. That was kind of half of it. And then they needed the act, uh, the coinage act of 1965 to enable them to, you know, change the composition of the coins. And so okay. the 1965 dated coins in clad consists. So that's old story. We know all that kind of stuff, but the notes, and this is what you're showing, which I like is what is interesting because if you notice the, 1964 coins were struck all the way into 1965. And even right here in 1966 for the dimes. If you and look. the dimes, 1966, what a lot of people don't realize is that um, 
1966, they also struck 1965 dated clad coins. So they didn't change the date on coins until mid-66. And mid-66 was when they started, um, when they stopped making silver coinage entirely. And they stopped making 65s. They made 66 coinage really for the rest of the year. And regular coinage resumed in 67 as clad coins with the new, you know, 50 or 40% half dollars. And then the nickel, copper, quarters, yeah. and dimes. And the yeah. copper, nickel, quarters, and dimes. And it's like, oddly, they froze to date on pennies and nickels, which weren't necessary. It was just kind of a, I think, a convention. Right. You know, because there was no need. But they did that as well. Um, and actually you'll find that the minages on the 66 coins, even though still very, very large, were the smallest out of the three of 65, six and seven, when they were just absolutely trying to flood the economy with new coin. Right now for a long time too, you know, they've said, well, the coin collectors caused a coin shortage and coin collectors. Oh no, no, no. We, yes, we did. It's <laughs> really about time we owned it. Because if you think about it, you know, the people that were sticking away rolls of coins, roll collectors, were creating a coin shortage. Oh, we still see it to this day. I, I, not a day goes by where I do not buy a coin from, that was struck during this time period uh, in the United States. I mean, literally every day in my office, I buy one of these or hundreds of these still this many years later. So, so yeah, so they, they made $167 million 1964 dimes, or yeah, 1964 dimes in 1966. They could have laid this out a little better. It's a lot of numbers <laughs> running together. I mean, this is a really interesting story, and it's got a lot of meat to it. And I think that this is this is great. One time, I actually sat down with the Coin World Almanac, trying to figure out what the exact dates were on when they started, when they stopped, when they did. And this was when I figured out that. They made the 65 coins into 66. Yeah. You know, huh. but there you have it. So it's like, you know, it, it's, did you put this up here for me to, me to slam dunk it? Did you throw it up on the rim for me to slam it on? I don't know. But um, it certainly would have been nicer if they'd uh, expounded on this sum. Or just, you know, like I said, this here is very confusing. They could have laid that table out a little bit better, I think. Yeah. So, well. Until the coin shortage was resolved and the issue was set to be revisited. So that's the news. And, to and the point, news. The news has been brought to us by Toothpicks. Hundreds and hundreds of years of service without a major design change. Another tribute to the genius that are Toothpicks. You're listening to the Coin Show podcast with Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman. So you've been getting any coin shows lately, buddy? <laughs> um, generally, I don't do a lot of shows because that's not my gig. My gig is working the counter. Um, but right. I do occasionally get out of my cage, and they let me fly free at, at shows. And it just so happens that I will be at a show in a couple short weeks. What show is that? Uh, let's see. You ever heard of the Central States uh, Numismatic Society? No, never. Never? Okay. Never. Well, this great group that holds this show in Schaumburg every year at the Renaissance Hotel. And uh, it's like my buddy Matt and I are always there and we're, we're bumming around and we're you know doing things, making content. And uh, we're easier to find than ever this year because Lost Dutchman Rare Coins will have a table. Table. Yep. We are at uh, table 1511. If you happen to be attending and you want to swing by and say hi, I will be at 1511. And Harlan J. Burke, featuring Russ and myself, will be at 401. And the best part is the entire Coin Show crew will be at this event. I think the everybody. Crew, everybody. Is Leanna going to be there? Yeah. Everybody's going to be there. So uh, you're going to see a lot of us. Uh, there are going to be special guest appearances by other people. I hear Ben the Coin Geek is going to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is it's a really great show. Central States last year was probably the biggest show other than the ANA that I it's attended. Fun. 
and it was huge. It was it was really great. Great turnout. Lots of dealers. Lots of good coins. Um, this year promises to be better. Yep. Uh, and while while we're talking about coin shows, why don't we just? I, I figured I would rattle off the uh, the upcoming shows that are tomorrow, the fourteenth of April here, twenty twenty four. I have a little list of them here. So these are upcoming sh- local shows. Uh, the Camelback Collectible Show in Phoenix, Arizona, is tomorrow. Uh, the West Suburban Coin and Collectible Show in Countryside, Illinois, is tomorrow. Seventy uh, first Street Coin and Currency Show in Indianapolis uh, is tomorrow. I will not be there. Uh, the, I might be at the uh, the one in Countryside. Well, there you go. Uh, the Greater Worcester Coin Show is in Auburn, Massachusetts tomorrow. Uh, Royal Oak yeah. Metro Detroit yeah. Coin yeah. Show is in Royal Oak, Michigan tomorrow. Uh, South St. Paul Monthly Coin Show. Uh, let's see. Burlington Coin Show. Burlington Township, New Jersey tomorrow. Uh, Melville Coin Stamp Collectible Show in Melville, New York tomorrow. Uh, Wayne County Coin Club Annual Show in Wooster, Ohio is tomorrow. The O&R Coin Show is in Pittsburgh. And the Montcoin Coin Show is in Telford, Pennsylvania tomorrow. So if you guys get a chance, go to a local show. They're fun. You find all sorts of people there you might not see. You might meet new friends. You might see Mike and I bumming around one of these shows, you just never like know. A club to join, you never really know what you're going to find. I mean, that's right. That's right. Shows, I've joined Ilna, I've joined uh, uh, CSNS, mm-hmm. and, a, and all a bunch of really good organizations. A lot of really cool. Oh, and the uh, oh, what is it? The uh, the coin club I belong to in Indiana. I don't even live in Indiana. I belong to an Indiana coin club. The Indiana State Numismatic Association. No, no, it's a uh, it's a small town. Hobart. Uh, it's the one run by uh, Mr. Eric Kibbe. Oh, Richmond, Richmond, Richmond. yeah. I did. They had a co- they had their first coin show the other day, and yeah, I attended, and it was great. It was a great show. Yeah, they do. They do really cool stuff. All right, friend. Well, anything else you want to talk about coin show wise? Um, no, not really. I think that uh, coin shows are are a really great learning opportunity for you. Uh, the best part about them is the fact that you get to see things that you probably won't see you can handle things that you probably can't afford and you get a chance to look at a lot of different examples of coins and that really is the best way to to know what you know is going on and what's out there right coin shows are a great place to learn if you're thinking about getting involved in a series and you want to go out and look at these coins before you start throwing your money down it's not a bad idea to get to a show, handle some coins, start playing with them, uh, get an idea of what you're looking at, see what you might like or what you might dislike. You, sometimes you can take a pic, look at a picture of a coin on the internet, and once you get it in your hand, you're like, eh, maybe not. So, you have clubs. I want to do a little. I want to do a little shameless plug here. Go for it. Plug away, friend. Uh, a couple of months ago, I kind of floated the idea of uh, starting an online coin club, and we went through the trials and tribulations of trying to set it up. Uh, we named it. Yeah. So we gave it the collectors of interesting numismatic stuff, which is coins. Um, and it is up and running. I saw that. Coins Club group on Facebook. If you guys want to join, uh, all you gotta do is send a uh send an email or just actually go to Facebook and try to join the, the coins club. Um, we have we have leadership now, we have a president, we have a schedule, we're gonna have our first meeting on April 17th. Love it. Uh, it is. It's starting to finally move. You know, it was a it was a slow process building, but we've got like seventy five or eighty members already. Wow! Heck yeah! Yeah. So it's it promises to be pretty interesting, and I know that you know this is going to be what I like about the idea of the online coin club is that there's no dues. There's you know none of that stuff. It it doesn't have all the five hundred one c three stuff, so we don't have to do minutes. We don't have to do. You know, You're just there for the fun part. We get to do the fun stuff and leave it at that. I like and it. A lot of the stuff that we do, you know, so like we we meet on Zoom. And so, you know, yes, yeah, somebody donates that. But, you know, it's that's not really a big donation. And if everybody, you know, pinches in just a little bit to help everybody, then we have a really cool club. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention at Central States, and then we'll get to the part of the show where I kick your butt. Um, 
is my friend Melissa Kahn messaged me the other day, and at Central States, uh, the Women of Numismatics is having a meeting, uh, and Liz Cochran is doing a presentation there. And it her presentation is titled Lady Liberty, Real or Ideal? And that's on Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Uh, at Central States. The 2nd of May, I believe, is when that is. Uh, so, yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, if you guys would be interested in hearing that and will be at Central States, that's how you go and see it. So, all right, I'm going to hit this button here real quick. Let's see which one. Not that one. And now for the coolest thing to walk in this week. A competition segment between Matt and Mike to see who's had the coolest thing walk into their shops. Who'll win this episode? Let's find out. Matt? Mike? Who's got the coolest thing? You're a double dipper. You're a double dipper. I'm okay with that. I'm absolutely okay with that. I previewed my coolest thing last week during our... Actually, it was last show. During yeah, it our, was during our coolest thing. But look, double dipper. It finally came back. It came back graded. Uh, it graded PCGS Pro sixty eight deep cameo. This coin is a monster. You've given it a name. We have. We have given it the name Phoenix Rising. And uh, I mean, for a target toned coin, I can't say I've been a big fan of toning. Right. Say I've been a big fan of commemorative silver dollars. Yeah. And yet here we are. It's because pretty. The coin is just a smoke show. It it's is. Pretty. I mean, you, you take a coin that on average, I, I don't think you could get me to turn around and look at. Um, and, and I mean, you've elevated this just through natural toning to a four digit coin. Uh, yeah, I would say probably for sure. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, the coin is pretty. It's just a darn shame that it picked one of the ugliest coins <laughs> ever to happen on. This is true. But if you're going to have one of the ugliest coins ever, this is the way you want to have it. Yeah, yeah. that's like having a proof like Susan B. Anthony dollar, though. It's like, yeah. Better yet, though, it, it at least is not the Olympic side that's toned. It's the eagle. It's the beautiful. That's true. So, um. You know, look, it, it, this coin is just, it, it's striking. It, it really gets you, it it just has a look to it. And it's even more vibrant in hand. If you Oh, I, I suspect, definitely. I just like that you guys named it. I, I think that's cool. Yeah. Um, and, and truthfully, in the deal that we bought this, there were seven other sets with this silver dollar in it. Right. They all stored exactly the same way. In the exact same place. Hmm. And none of them, huh? A single one of them were toned like this at all. Sometimes it's nature is mysterious when it comes to this kind of stuff. Yeah. Just never ever know. Very, very, very cool coin. I'm going to show you the coin I brought. And actually, uh, we have also named our coin. Uh, his name is Larry. Larry. Uh, Larry. Larry. Yep. Uh, we bought a 1916 D half in a PCGS green label 64 holder, and it got a CAC sticker. Uh, coin's pretty. Got a lot of luster. Got a little bit of just kind of muted toning, a little, little purple. Um, I'll let you know it's original. Yeah. Let you know that it's not been monkeyed with. And uh, let me show you back here. And there you go. Pretty coin. Uh, so, But I really like these early coins because of the surfaces. The surfaces on these are just so cool. Uh, they have that orange peel surface to them uh, that kind of, it's not quite smooth. It's its very slightly bumpy. It's, it's cool. So you got the reverse. What's that? Can you show us the reverse? I, I had it up. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, there it is. There we go. Just a pretty original survivor that has not been monkeyed with. I just thought it was cool. So that's my coolest thing. His name is Larry. Praise him. Larry is is beautiful. Praise Larry. Larry walking around in his dress is beautiful. <laughs> hey, look, I've got to accept a lot of things. So, um, yeah, no, I, I, he's fine, but does even compare to the Phoenix? So, oh, you guys, you guys even shorten the name to the Phoenix. 
Do you refer to it like that around the office? You're like, hey, hey, this customer's here. Hey, go grab the Phoenix real quick so we can take a look at it. Have you done that? Well, it's either that or say lewd, disgusting things. So, yeah, that's pretty much what we've done. Oh, man. Hey, man. Go grab the Phoenix for me. You guys are dorks. You guys are dorks up there. But you're the, you're the captain. Oh, I, I know that. I know. My coin's name is Larry. You're just oh, Phoenix Rising. I know my captain. Yeah. Larry wins. You know what? <laughs> you, you could be replaced. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, that's fun. All right, buddy. Well, can you believe it? We just knocked out another show. Yeah, and I, uh, I, I seem to like the shorter format. It's kind of cool. It's just, it, it's, it's, it's just is what it is. It's just natural progression of things. Yeah. Hey, when we got a lot to say, we'll be here longer. That's right. This is not intentional of any length yeah. at all. It's no, just- and, and you guys will be seeing a lot of content from me coming out at the show. I'm sure Mike will be making some too. Oh, We're yeah. going to have some friends up there that we are going to give them some challenges and we're going to compete with them at the show because why not? Why not? We'll have some swag to give away. Yeah. I'm bringing swag. I have new swag. swag. I've got some old swag. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be great. Just come by, come by the table. Uh, Michael have them. I'll have them. And uh, yeah, buddy. Come by and say hi and, uh, and check us out. See Russ, see me. We had a gentleman stop by the shop this week who left with a really nice Lost Dutchman lanyard and a bottle of Spicy Mike's hot sauce. So, in fact, I saw the post of that. I saw the post of that on Facebook. It's, yeah, it's like I'll tell you what, that Spicy Mike's is getting scarce. It is. I have exactly two cases left. That's it. Yeah, well, that's a case and a half more than I got. Well, when it's gone, it's gone. I you know, know what? I have I have my secret. My office bottle I keep right here. I'll just take a little nip when I need to. I the shelf right behind me. That's my yeah. Right there. Oh, I see it. I see it hiding there. Yep. That's funny. <laughs> what he knows about. That's the hidden secret bottle. Yep. Hide it in plain sight. <laughs> so uh, I guess that means that uh, it's time to say goodbye, unfortunately. Yeah, no, unfortunately. Well, oh, if you want to come just for the swag, that's fine. We're cool with that. Come on. Yeah. I'll see you there. So we want to thank everybody uh, who has shown up here in the, in the uh, YouTube chat. Everybody yep. shown up on Facebook. Um, all the people that contribute to the show from um, the unnamed source to uh, the, the uh, fuzzy guy to um, what other nicknames do we have? Um, I, I, we can't say some of them. Well, oh, that's true. So thanks, Barry. Thanks, Ernesto. <laughs> thanks, uh, Corey. And uh, thank you. Uh, Russ and Leanna and uh, everybody else who helps make this possible. Thank you mostly to you who listen yeah, because yeah. without you, we're not doing this. So um, check out our, our uh, website, coinshowradio.com. Do not forget. You can find every single episode of this show. If you want to go back and listen, um, they're on our website. Yeah. They're on the website. I really, you know, we had a comment from Tyler block in the uh, chat tonight saying he's, He's going back to listen to every episode from the beginning and he's on episode 75. It's like if, if he can still keep a cogent thought in his head after listening to the first 25 episodes, of us and Hey, he made it to 75. He's in, he's hooked. Yeah. He got now it. he's got the easy stuff. Now he got it. coming. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you, if you joined your coins, you'd have Larry bird. Get it. Larry bird. Larry- Oh my god! Okay, that's enough, Mike. We I gotta hit this button. We gotta shut this thing down. The jokes are getting bad. So long, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. You've been listening to the Coin Show podcast with Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman. The boys will be back soon with another informative and entertaining episode. Meanwhile, you can follow the show on social media at The Coin Show on Twitter and Instagram and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Coin Show. You can also join their private group. Just search Facebook groups for Friends of The Coin Show and request access. But if you want to take it to the next level and support The Coin Show podcast, you can go to www.patreon.com slash The Coin Show. If you subscribe at the $5 a month level or higher, 
You'll have access to Not The Coin Show podcasts on the off weeks, as well as other surprises reserved for our patrons. Visit our website at coinshowradio.com or download our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. This has been The Coin Show Podcast.